Well, welcome to this short presentation on alcohol and the acute effects of alcohol in particular. Now, this can be a problem at any age, but if you're a young person watching this presentation, probably this is particularly for you because alcohol is a potentially dangerous drug. And make no mistake, alcohol is a drug. The reason people drink alcohol initially is not because it tastes nice. The nice taste that you get is an acquired taste. It takes time to learn to like alcohol. Most people, when they first drink it, don't like it very much unless some companies put lots of sugar in it and turned it into an alco pop and made it taste like lemonade or something. It's an acquired taste. But the reason people drink alcohol is because it's a psychotropic drug. It affects the mind. It affects the way you feel. That's why people take it. So let's carry on and look at some of the short-term effects. There's two uh, completely self-obvious effects here. Well, here we see one of the acute effects of alcohol. It's caused nausea and, in this case, vomiting. Now, one way to think about your brain is that it is in two parts. You have a primitive part in the lower parts of the cerebrum. And this is the part of the brain that's about survival and propagation of the species. So that is the base instinct part of the brain. But then round about the surface of the brain, the cerebral cortex, that is where the more reasoned, intelligent person that is you resides. Now what alcohol does is it suppresses the cortex. So it suppresses the civilized, reasoning, considerate part of you. It suppresses the part of you that facilitates your interaction with other people. Because it's necessary to be civilized to cooperate with other people. And this is why humans are such a successful species. We can cooperate with each other. But of course, you're not going to cooperate with someone today if they punched you in the face yesterday. And you're not going to cooperate with someone today if they had sex with your wife yesterday. This is why we need social constraints. We need this social order. And because alcohol inhibits the cerebral cortex, it depresses the cerebral cortex, but it doesn't depress the instinctive part of the brain as much. Areas like the limbic system and the hypothalamus, they keep working. So what that means is the civilized person becomes disinhibited because of the inhibitory effects of alcohol on the cortex, while the base parts of the brain still function normally. Therefore, aggression is more likely to come out because the circuitry that generates aggression is working and the civilized parts of the cortex that would seek to suppress that and say, no, this is not a good idea, they're inhibited. And it's the same with sex. The parts of the brain that suggest sex would be desirable are there, as they are perhaps all the time, but the cortex is inhibited when the person is intoxicated with alcohol. So the inhibitory effects on the instincts are no longer present or certainly reduced and we get sexual behaviour and aggressive behaviour which otherwise would be unlikely to occur. Now I want to give you some evidence for these claims that I'm making about the disinhibitory effects of alcohol. And these are from data collected by the National Health Service in the UK. Now having talked to a lot of students, they found out that 16% of students say they had been taken advantage of sexually when they'd been intoxicated with alcohol. So that's almost one in five of our young students have been taken advantage of sexually as a result of drinking in an unsafe environment. Now this message is not saying don't drink, it's saying only drink in a safe environment with people around you that you trust. And 20% of young women between the ages of 15 and 19 say alcohol is the main reason they first had sex. So do you want to have sex for the first time in a considered loving environment, perhaps with a lifelong partner, or do you want to have casual sex with the first person that comes on 
as a result of inhibition due to alcohol. So more evidence from the National Health Service. 40% of young people who have sex, who are having sex, say they haven't used a condom on at least one occasion due to being intoxicated. So in people that are already sexually active with diverse partners, they fail to use protection 40% of the time. And of course, this means that sexually transmitted diseases, including potentially HIV, are transmissible on such occasions. And 44% of people diagnosed with a sexually transmitted infection admitted to excessive drinking prior to having the sex that brought them into the care of the clinical facility to treat the sexually transmitted infection. Well, all of us involved in acute health care treat the effects of domestic violence on a unfortunately regular basis. Now, despite containing no nutrients, the alcohol itself, the actual ethyl alcohol, is very calorific. So one gram of alcohol will contain seven calories. That's uh, 29 kilojoules of energy. And in one unit of alcohol, there's eight grams of alcohol. So 10 mils of pure alcohol, 10 mils of ethanol will contain eight grams of alcohol because of course alcohol is lighter than water. And that will produce 56 calories or 232 kilojoules. So you don't have to be that discerning to work out that if you drink 10 units of alcohol, that's 560 calories. Now, as well as causing abdominal obesity, alcohol will increase the amount of estrogen that men have in their bodies. So you can see here on the right that as well as abdominal obesity, there is gynecomastia, male enlargement of the breasts. And compared to this more healthy specimen on the left, so take your pick. Now, I think part of the reason people have a problem with alcohol is they don't know how much they're drinking. We need to understand the dose that we are administering to ourselves. I mean, we're not going to give a patient 100 milligrams of diamorphine or 15 grams of paracetamol. We need to gauge the dose of the drug accurately. The right dose of the right drug to the right patient at the right time via the correct route, as we all learn. So we need to learn about the dose of alcohol and the best way to work out the actual dose of alcohol that's being given is the units system. Now in the UK one unit of alcohol is 10 mils of pure ethyl alcohol that is the ethanol or the ethyl alcohol that make that drink alcoholic. So we're not interested in the total volume of drinks that are consumed because that contains water and, and other things like flavorings and carbohydrates. We're interested in the actual amount of alcohol that drink contains. So if you think about it, if you drink 100 mils of beer and that's 5% alcohol, then 5% of that beer is alcohol. You've drank 100 mils, so that means you've consumed 5 mils of alcohol. And as one unit is 10 mils of alcohol. That means in that 100 mils of beer, you've consumed one half of a unit, 0.5 units of alcohol. But if we drink 100 mils of wine, and that's 12% alcohol, then in that 100 mils of wine, there's going to be 12 mils of alcohol because it's 12%, and that's 1.2 units. Now, spirits are traditionally around about 40% alcohol, most spirits you buy will in fact be 40% alcohol. So if you drink 100 mils of vodka, for example, in that 100 mils of vodka, there is 40 mils of pure ethanol. So that means if 100 mils of vodka is consumed, 40 mils of alcohol are going to be drank. And that equals four units because a unit of alcohol is 10 mils. And you can work this out for any drink that you are consuming. So it's the total volume of fluid that's been drank 
divided by 100 multiplied by the percentage of alcohol in that drink is going to give you the number of mils of alcohol consumed. You can then take the number of mils of alcohol, divide that by 10, and that will give you the number of units of alcohol that have been consumed. But if you don't quite get that, I'm going to show you a few examples. So suppose we drink a bottle of wine, 75 centiliters is 750 milliliters. So here we have 750 milliliters of wine. And we notice that it's 12.5% alcohol by volume. So that would be 750 divided by 100, multiplied by 12.5, and that gives 93.75 mils of alcohol. And as we see helpfully illustrated in this particular manufacturer's label, we see that it's 9.4 UK units of alcohol. So today we are drinking gin mixed up with tonic and I'm going to drink 200 mils of this gin and we notice it's 47.3% alcohol by volume. And I think what I'll do is I'll work out how much I'm going to drink before I start drinking so I know what the dose is going to be. So I'm going to drink 200 mils of this gin. So it's 200 divided by 100 to turn it into a percentage times the percentage of alcohol, that's 47.3%. So that means by the time I've drank my 200 mils of gin, I will have drank 94.6 mils of ethanol. And because there's 10 mils of ethanol in a unit, that means that this drinking episode I will consume 9.46 units of alcohol. Just one more example, this Malibu is 21% alcohol by volume. If we drink 250 mils of this Malibu, that's 250 divided by 100, multiplied by the percentage of alcohol, which is 21, gives us 52.5 mils of alcohol, which is 5.25 units. So the challenge is that we assess our drinking in terms of units and help those around us to understand how much they're drinking by encouraging people to work out how many mils of pure alcohol they are consuming with their alcoholic drinks. Now it's sometimes useful to divide the effects of alcohol into the acute effects and the chronic effects. So first of all, if we think about acute alcohol poisoning, if people drink a lot over a short period of time, they're at risk from acute alcohol poisoning. Now, what can happen here is that people drink a lot and then they drink so much that they actually crash out and become semi-conscious. But at the time when they crash out, they've still got some alcohol in their stomach, especially if they've been drinking wine and spirits and strong drinks. And that alcohol will keep absorbing. So even though the person has become unconscious with alcohol, there's still more alcohol in their stomach, which will carry on diffusing into their blood, increasing the blood alcohol concentration still further, potentially well into the toxic ranges. So high levels of alcohol. Because remember, when the alcohol is in the stomach, it takes 45 minutes to re reach peak plasma concentrations. So the effect of drinking is delayed by 45 minutes between taking that drink and the majority of that alcohol getting into the bloodstream. So in acute alcohol poisoning, it inhibits autonomic nervous system, autonomic neurological function, and it also inhibits cardiac function eventually. So it will cause loss of the gag reflex. Now I've looked after patients all night who've been completely intubated without muscle relaxants, without any anaesthetic or sedation, and they've tolerated an endotracheal tube all night as I maintained their airway because they'd lost their gag reflex as a result of the alcohol. By inhibiting the autonomic nerves, it can also cause hypoventilation and respiratory arrest. And by inhibiting cardiac function, it can cause dysrhythmias 
abnormal rhythms of the heart and eventually cardiac cardiac arrest and and tragically death from respiratory arrest or cardiac arrest now what people often don't realize is that you can drink units of alcohol quickly but the liver will only break down detoxify one unit of alcohol per hour so this means that if someone drinks 10 units of alcohol fairly quickly in the first hour the liver will break down one of those units but what this means is essentially that there are nine units of alcohol in the blood just waiting to be detoxified it's like a queue these are the other nine units have to just wait their turn and it will be nine hours before that alcohol is completely taken away from the blood by the detoxifying effect of the dehydrogenasing enzymes in the liver. So this means if people carry on drinking, the liver's only breaking the alcohol down by one unit per hour, but as continued drinking occurs, the units of alcohol in the blood are going to progressively escalate and as the amount of alcohol in the blood increases, as blood alcohol concentrations increase, we see the adverse effects that are listed below. So thank you for listening to this short presentation about mostly the acute effects of alcohol. I'm just going to leave you with one last slide. I'm not going to go through it. You can freeze frame it. But this shows some of the chronic effects of alcohol with use of alcohol over long periods of time so remember as a rough rule of thumb as a rough guide men should not be drinking more than 21 units of alcohol per week and women because they have a smaller lean body mass shouldn't be drinking more than 14 units of alcohol per week on a regular basis <laughs>